How's it going everybody? This is B. The Bush. Today I'm going to talk about adding an AC outlet to your car. Some of these newer electric cars come with an outlet built right into the car and I'm just kind of jealous. Today I'm going to show you how you can add a power bank like this and at the same time keep it charged because in reality you can buy any power station capable of outputting 1000 watts, 1200 watts and they'll technically do the same thing but to keep it charged is another situation. This video is brought to you by LumoPow. They supplied me with this power station in order to do this demonstration. This is the car adapter. Normally this is only an output, but it also does input somehow. So I bought this 10 foot cable. It has a car adapter on both ends. This is non-standard. It's typically not recommended to have a male connector with live voltage on here. And you can easily accidentally put it on some metal and it'll short out. So when using a car adapter to charge this power bank, you have to be very careful with these type of cables. If you have it plugged in on one end, you need to cover it with some plastic so it's protected. In my Model 3, the 12 volt adapter is located in the armrest. It's tucked away in here. We can plug in one end of the adapter in there. It lights up indicating there's power. We can then replace the tray. The cable comes out nicely towards the front or this corner right here. And the armrest will still snap into place. And then we can run this towards the back. Underneath the floor mat here, going across like that and up the side so you can't see it and finally into the trunk you can tuck it nicely underneath the seat as well so you can't even see the wire at all plug it in and typically these plugs allow a charging of 10 amps it's ramping up to around 120 watts every hour you plug this in you're looking at getting around eight percent recharge so you can actually just leave this plugged in and when the car powers down the 12 volt it'll cut everything completely off so it's not going to drain your 12 volt battery unless you have one of those cars where the 12 volt adapter is always on for a tesla if you don't have dog mode sentry mode or climate control on it'll actually power off after some time. I'm gonna close the door, start the timer, and we'll see how long it takes before the Tesla powers off the 12 volt adapter. 28 and a half minutes and the car powered off the car adapter. With everything off, watch what happens when I enter the car. The car adapter turns back on and it starts charging again. So every time you turn it off, you'll get about three or four percent of charge back into the power bank along with all the times that you're driving it will also charge it as well having an ac plug in a car is super convenient especially if you're going camping typically you just have to let your hair dry but in this instance you can just turn on the ac push and hold it it says 60 hertz and we can turn it right on now my hair dryer is actually from Japan, it's 100 volts. So if I turn it on maximum, it actually consumes 1400 watts. It's a little bit more than this thing can handle, but I'll show you what happens. If I go over, it just turns off. And then we can just turn it back on and it'll self reset. And I'll turn it back on. Now you might be wondering, can you keep this in the trunk? What if it's in the hot sun? It can operate up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. As long as you keep it out of the hot sun, it should remain below that temperature, let's say in the trunk. But probably during a really hot day, you might want to keep an eye out on how hot it gets. At 1000 watts, I can run this blow dryer for around one hour before this battery runs out. Of course, every time you walk away from the car, it's gonna recharge it a little bit. If you really wanna keep on charging it in the Tesla, turn on the sentry mode, dog mode, and, and keep the cigarette lighter on, and it'll keep on charging this more quickly. If you're in a gasoline car, of course it turns off the cigarette lighter when you turn off the ignition most of the time. That's probably a good thing because you don't wanna drain your battery and you can't start your car. I just used it 1% right now. It just goes back to charging via the cigarette lighter. So this truly is hands off once you got this connected you pop over to the trunk use your gadgets and when you're done make sure you turn off the ac usb and the car will just keep on topping it off the display shows you the percentage of capacity left at the current output power how much time it'll take to empty on the top you can individually turn on dc usb ac or led if i turn off everything the display turns off if i turn on the dc the cigarette lighter ports and these barrel connectors are activated these would be six amp maximum which is 72 watts. The 12 volt cigarette lighter is 126 watts out maximum. If I 
turn on the USB, you got three USB ports, each at 2.4 amps and a 100 watt capable USB-C in or out. So you can charge with USB-C. You can output a total of 241 watts out of the DC and the USB, which basically means you can max out all the USB and the cigarette lighter port. Next, you can turn on the AC by holding it for one second. It says F60, which means 60 Hertz. If you tap it three times quickly, it will go to 50 Hertz. Tap it three times again, it'll go back to 60 Hertz. Now you get two AC ports and it goes up to 1200 Watts. You get a non-grounded one and also a grounded one. In terms of charging, you can either use the power adapter, solar panels. You can charge via the car adapter, which goes in through here. This is actually a non-standard way to charge it. And you can also charge it via the USB-C at 100 Watts. The included power adapter charges at 140 Watts. And given that this is a thousand watt hour, to charge it to 80 percent you're going to need 7.2 hours you can actually combine two of these to get 2000 watt hours and it does it in this non-conventional way you have a slave unit that outputs ac into your master unit so you would pull out this cable from the ac adapter plug it into one of this and you got to turn on the ac of course and you remove this back piece and provide your master unit some AC from the slave unit. If you do this, you're not gonna get the full 2000 watt hour capacity because you're gonna waste about 20% going out of this AC inverter here. The handle is made out of plastic so you can't step on that, but the rest of the housing is made out of aluminum. And yeah, it's pretty sturdy. It has a capacity of 1000 watt hours. To charge it from zero to 100%, I used 1156 watt hours. So the AC power adapter wasted about 15%. Let's unplug this. I'm gonna turn on the AC. Let's turn on the heater. It can support up to 1200 watts peak. 1500 watts and we're seeing 1.1 kilowatts now oh it's a little bit too much for it so i'm going to turn it back down this is a 1500 watt heater so definitely a bit over the 1200 watts let me turn it on to the middle setting and we'll let this run until it completely drains i got 876 watt hours having a usable capacity of 87.6 percent is actually really good i've tested a lot of other power banks some of the worst ones come in at even 70 percent i forgot to show you guys the led function well okay see it lights up having an ac plug in your car is definitely a game changer this is one of the more compact power stations i've seen however it has an unconventional car charging adapter plug and a strange way to piggyback two of these together. You probably don't want to carry around a really giant thing in your trunk all the time because it takes up space. So this is a very compact way to do it. And you actually get 1200 watts, enough to boil water, enough to run a hair dryer. If you guys are interested in this product, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.